Hi Year 11s, so today we're going to be looking at the plant side of organisms. So we're starting with the structure and function of a dicotylonous plant. So this is our first PowerPoint. There's going to be two PowerPoints when we're looking at plants. For this first PowerPoint, it's probably going to be entirely just one video, um, but we'll go from there. Uh, let's start off. So first off, what is a dicotylonous plant? So dicotylodons which are sometimes referred to as dicots, and I'll refer to them as dicots for the remainder of this PowerPoint, or dicotyls, are one of the two different groups of flowering plants that we know of. So we have monocots and dicots. Now, the reason we call them monocots and dicots is because of the characteristics that the plants have. So a dicot, as you can see in the diagram next to us, has two lead, or two embryonic leaves when it starts to grow, whereas a monocot only has one embryonic leaf. There are around 200,000 species in the dicot group. Um, and yeah, and like I said before, the other group are called the monocots. Moving on. So we want to look at the leaves of a dicotylous plant. So first off, we're going to give some, some terminology that we need to know. Now there's a diagram over here, up the top here. Um, two diagrams actually, but we'll focus on the leaf to start with. We'll look at the second diagram after. So, first off, a leaf is connected to a stem. Now, the stem is obviously the main part of the plant by a leaf stalk. So, if we've got a diagram up here, just this little part over here is the leaf stalk. That leaf stalk then leads to the veins of a leaf, and you can see the veins of a leaf coming off over here. So there is also a main vein going down the center of the leaf and then side veins coming off of the main vein. What those veins do is they help to carry substances to and from the leaf to help give it strength. Um, so veins in a plant or in a leaf, very much like the veins in the human body. Now when you have a leaf, usually they're gonna be shiny on the upper half. Now that's because they're coated in a waxy substance called the cuticle. Um, it makes it very thick on the front side of the leaf, which makes the leaf waterproof. So basically protects the leaf from losing too much water when it's hot or dry outside. So especially in Australia, you'll see lots of leaves have that cuticle on the top, very waxy on the top of the leaf. Underneath the cuticle is a layer of cells that we call the epidermis. Now that's the skin of the leaf. Um, most of the time, the epidermis is pierced by many small holes, and those holes are known as stomata. And this over here in the diagram up here, that's a magnified version of a stomata. So you can see it's either open sometimes, and sometimes it's closed. Now, stomata are usually found on the bottom of the leaf, and what they do is they allow gases to diffuse in and out of the leaf, as well as allowing water vapor to escape. They are generally guarded by something called guard cells, and the guard cells will open and close the stomata like their doors. Uh, they'll close in hot and dry weather. That will prevent too much water leaving the leaf, but in cool or damp weather, they'll obviously open up to allow that water back into the leaf. Uh, generally, leaves are flat. They're often very large and obviously very numerous on a plant. The reason for that is that it gives a greater surface area to the plant, allows them to take in more sunlight, more carbon dioxide. The veins in a leaf also help to keep that leaf flat. So they're pushing the leaf out, ensuring it remains flat and optimizing the surface area of the leaf. Uh, so continuing on, we're now going to look inside the leaf and uh, looking specifically at something called the mesophyll cells. So you can look at the insides of a leaf by looking at the very thin slices of the leaf under a microscope. And you can cut different sections in various places, therefore giving us a 3D picture of the leaf like we've got here. So between our upper epidermis and our lower epidermis, so top and bottom of the leaf, you have lots of cells which together make up the mesophyll. These cells generally contain chlorophyll and they're where, chlor uh, where photosynthesis is going to take place. Now towards the upper side of the cell, or the upper epidermis, the mesophyll cells are shaped like bricks and they're called palisade cells. So these brick-like looking ones here, they're palisade cells. Now below there, we also have rounded and irregular shaped uh, mesophyll cells, but they're called our spongy cells. 
There is also a whole lot of air spaces between the spongy cells. Now that's purely so that the guard cells and stomatas can open. Whereas we're not going to have them on the top with the palisade cells, therefore we can have that more brick-like structure. Um, now inside the leaf, we're also going to look at the vein. So the vein up is the vein is made up of two different parts. It's made up of the xylem and the phloem, and these are really important. We're going to talk about these in more detail on the next slide. Um, so the xylem is responsible for bringing water and mineral salts to the leaf, while the phloem is taking soluble sugars and other products of photosynthesis away from the leaf and getting rid of them. So the xylem and phloem are working like your arteries and veins, but a little bit different because it's a different organism. Um, now the next slide over here, we've got uh, two cross sections of cells. Now these are very important that you need to be able to draw. So the first one over here is we have a cross section of a dicot root. Um, the noticeable things that you may be required to draw in a test or an exam is you can see the xylem in the center here. Uh, we've got our phloem around the xylem. You've got a layer of cortex around here. You've got your epidermis around, your endodermis inside, and you also have your root hairs. They are the main things you'd need to be labeling onto your diagram of a root cell from a dicot. Um, we also have a cross section of a stem from a dicot. Uh, again, you're going to need to have your epidermis, which is the outside layer. Um, you'd definitely be talking about the pith, which is all through the center of the um, stem here. You've got your vascular bundles, your vascular bundle over here. Your vascular bundle contains your xylem and your phloem. The xylem is on the inside, and if I just find my mouse here, the xylem is on the inside facing the pith, and your phloem is on the outside towards the epidermis. It's also worth noting that your cortex is there as well. Um, we also want to look inside the chloroplast. So if you look inside the chloroplast using an electron microscope, we can't do it with the light microscopes in our classroom, you can see much more detail inside of the cell. So you can also, first thing you notice is that it's filled with thin interconnected membranes, as you can see all throughout here. Um, and through a series of experiments, scientists have determined that those membranes almost look like tiles on a roof. Now, an important part, how is water going to get into the leaves of a plant? So first off, water evaporates from leaves and other parts of the plant above ground. We call that transpiration. You've talked about that in geography in year seven, eight, nine science. Transpiration is generally going to occur through the stomata, as we mentioned before. As water evaporates from the plant, more water enters the roots from the ground. So the roots are absorbing as much as they can from the ground. And the water flows up the stem in what's called the transpiration stream. That water flows up the plant into narrow pipes called xylem, which we looked at before, um, which are very similar to the capillaries in the human body. And the xylem are made up of a very light material, it's very hard as well, called, and waterproof, called lignin. Um, in trees and shrubs, the xylem are the main component of the bark, and they don't actually contain living material, they're actually dead parts of the plant. Now, water, as it's evaporated, is being pulled up the stem through the plant leaves. If you cut off the leaves or you block the stomata, the transpiration stream will slow down or stop completely. Now, normally a plant's cells are full of water and they're very turgid, so they're very hard and very stretched out, um, and all the cells are pressing against each other. That helps keep the leaves flat. When a plant is running low on water, that's when you get the wilted plant, so it's very droopy and hanging down. Um, so the link with soil. So what's the point of roots in a plant? Well, the point of roots in a plant is to anchor the plant into the soil, but they're also going to provide the water from the plant and the link between the water and the soil and the plant itself. So soil water provides plants with both water and the mineral salts that it's absorbing from the soil. So the end of every root has these very fine hairs called root hairs on them. And the whole purpose of those root hairs is to increase the surface area of the root to increase absorption of water and those minerals into the plant. Now, some nutrients are going to be absorbed by the roots against concentration gradient through active transport, which we looked at in semester one. Um, and once they've been absorbed, the ions will travel up the stem via the transpiration stream. So it's be carried via the transpiration stream to the leaves. 
Now, roots need to respire, so they need to go for aerobic respiration. That means your soil must contain air. That means it must be well drained. So you can't have just pour water in to the soil and expect your plant to grow. That will waterlog the plant, at which point salts uptake is going to be slowed and the growth of the plant will be very, very slow and poor. Food substances and how we transport them. So soluble food substances are made in the leaves of the plant. Now those substances need to be transported to other parts of the plant to use for their growth of the other parts of the plant. So they are transported to other parts of the plant through the phloem. Unlike the xylem, phloem is a living tissue. And the movement of food substances in the phloem is called translocation. It requires energy from respiration. So ATP from cellular respiration, aerobic respiration. In a tree trunk, and this is important to talk about, the phloem is the soft inner part of the bark. So you'll have the phloem inside here of a tree. Therefore, if a ring of bark is cut from a tree trunk, so you cut a perfect circle around the tree trunk, food substances can't get to the roots, the roots can't get any energy, therefore the roots die, which makes the whole tree die. So you could potentially kill a tree just by making a ring deep enough ring around the outside of the tree's trunk.